Many years ago, I shared a recipe video about making mini meatloaves. They were so delicious and I make them all the time for my family. But over the years, I've been experimenting with the recipe, coming up with different flavors and using different meats and coming up with different ideas. And recently I came upon an interesting idea. How can I make meatloaves taste like cheeseburgers? I love the flavor of a cheeseburger and I thought a meatloaf would be the perfect thing to adapt for that idea. And so I gave it a bit of an experiment and I came up with something pretty amazing. So let's try some of these beautiful cheeseburger mini meatloaves on the One Pot Chef. First things first, I've got a large mixing bowl here and in it I've got 500 grams just over a pound of good quality beef mince or ground beef. I recommend going for something that doesn't have too much fat in it, so a leaner beef, but even just a cheap sort of hamburger mince will be fine. But keep in mind, the more fat content, the greasier they tend to be after they're cooked. But that's okay, you can drain them off on a bit of paper towel later, but we'll come to that when we get to it. So we've got our mince in there, and to that we're gonna add in half a small brown onion, which I have just chopped up. I usually put the onion in raw because it's going to be going into the oven anyway, but if you prefer your onions to be browned in a fry pan first, you can go ahead and do that. You could also add in some chopped up browned bacon into this as well if you want to brown the bacon with your onions as well, but if you don't want to use bacon, you're more than welcome to leave it out. I'm also adding in one egg, and I'm also adding in some garlic. Now, I'm putting in some of this minced garlic. If you're using fresh, you could use two cloves. I'm using about two to three teaspoons of minced garlic. And for a bit of extra flavor, I'm adding in some mixed dried Italian herbs. Now you can get this from the spice aisle of any supermarket. It's usually a combination of different herbs, things like basil, rosemary, oregano, parsley, thyme. They're usually a slightly different combination each one, but basically you just want a bit of a mixture of herb flavors. Now I'm just sprinkling it in. I'm not gonna give an exact measurement, maybe about two teaspoons roughly, and about a cup and a half of fresh breadcrumbs. Now when I say fresh breadcrumbs, what I mean is to take some sandwich bread. In this case, I used some just regular everyday bread that you get from the supermarket. I took three slices, shoved it into a blender or a food processor and just blitzed it up until it was basically crumbs. <laughs> it's very simple. Uh, that's fresh bread crumbs. Don't use the dry store-bought bread crumbs because they tend to not work well with this particular recipe. The reason I'm putting bread crumbs into this is it's kind of doing a double duty. When the meat cooks, it releases its juices and the juices are going to be absorbed by the breadcrumbs in the mixture. And that's going to not only help to maintain the flavor of the meat, it's also gonna to help to keep the meatloaves nice and moist because there is nothing worse than dry, flavorless meatloaf. Now we've got everything in the bowl. All we have to do is, with clean hands, mix everything together until it's completely combined. Once our meat mixture is combined, I've just formed it into a sort of rough disc shape, popped it onto a chopping board, and just using a knife, we're gonna cut it in half, roughly, and then half again to create quarters. And then we're just going to cut each quarter in half, so we'll have eight roughly even pieces. Then simply take each piece and give it a bit of a roll in your hands until you get a sort of a rough meatball sort of shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just makes it easier to manipulate later. There we go, eight happy little meatballs. Time to assemble our meatloaves. Now, I'm using my little mini loaf pan today, but if you don't have a loaf pan, no worries. You can use a regular muffin pan. That will be perfectly acceptable for this. You'll have round meatloaves, but they still taste the same. Now, all we need to do is take each of these meatballs and then simply pop them in and using your fingers, just press them out until they fill in the shape and then just kind of flatten the top slightly. You don't have to be too precious with this, just enough so you've got a roughly flat surface on the top. And then continue on with the rest. 
You'll have noticed that I greased the pan. Even though this is a non-stick pan, it's very important to grease a pan like this when you're cooking with meat because it's very easy for it to stick even in a non-stick pan because ultimately non-stick when it's applied to a pan is basically about how easy it is to clean after the fact not about how it stops the food from sticking to the pan when it's cooking so keep that in mind just a little bit of spray on oil will be perfect for this now, if you were to pop these into the oven right now, you'd have perfectly acceptable regular meatloaves. But today we are making cheeseburger meatloaves. And in order to make cheeseburger meatloaves, we need three simple ingredients to give them that wonderful cheeseburger classic flavor. First one is some good old tomato sauce or tomato ketchup. And we're just going to put a little bit on top of each, just a little squirt like so. And then the same again with some classic American style yellow mustard. It's that combination of the tomato and the mustard that gives a cheeseburger that quintessential, almost immediately recognizable flavor. And so using the back of a teaspoon, we're just going to roughly spread that sauce over the surface like so. And what cheeseburger would be complete without cheese? So I'm putting a little bit of grated cheese on top of each meatloaf. And that's going to melt on top in the oven. It's going to be absolutely delicious. You can use any cheese you like for this. I'm just using regular grated cheddar cheese, but whatever you happen to have in the fridge will be wonderful. But I recommend not putting too much cheese on these because if you put too much, it tends to make them really oily and greasy on top. But I recommend less is more. <laughs> and our cheeseburger mini meatloaves are ready to go into the oven. A preheated oven, 200 degrees Celsius, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to be cooking them for about 20 to 25 minutes. And a little while later, our cheeseburger mini meatloaves are fresh out of the oven, looking absolutely gorgeous and they smell amazing. Now, all we need to do is use a spoon or a butter knife just to carefully lift each meatloaf out and transfer this onto a plate lined with some absorbent kitchen paper towel and that'll get rid of any excess grease off them then we'll be ready to serve serve your little meatloaves with your favorite meatloaf sides things like mashed potato and gravy mixed vegetables maybe a nice side salad whatever you like these are so easy to throw together I recommend doing a double batch. Instead of making eight, you could double the ingredients and make 16, serve half for dinner, and then freeze the rest. It's really great to sort of have these little ones in the freezer. You can keep them in there for up to three months, and then you can just take them out, heat them up in the microwave whenever you feel like a bit of meatloafy goodness. These just look absolutely gorgeous. They're meaty and cheesy, and they smell just like cheeseburgers. All right. Grabbing my fork, I'm diving in and having a taste. Ooh, still hot. Okay. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mmm. <laughs> the meat is moist and succulent and it is bursting with flavour. Those breadcrumbs have really helped to retain all that meaty goodness. The sauce on top, the combination of the sauce and the mustard, has created a sort of glaze effect on top. Absolutely wonderful flavour. And of course the cheese on top. All of it works together to create this wonderful cheeseburger flavour in a wonderful little meatloaf. Now these are so easy to make. Today I showed you how to make them both just plain regular meatloaves and the cheeseburger variation. But of course, you can come up with all sorts of flavor combinations using your favorite recipe ingredients. So let me know in the comments section how you would adapt this meatloaf recipe. What kind of flavors would you use? What would be your inspiration? I'd love to check them out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Check out my other videos at onepotchefshow.com. And until next time, see you later. Like I said, these are fully freezable and I love to make extras when I make these because they're easy to freeze. You just simply let them cool completely on a plate. And then once they're cooled completely, pop them into a Ziploc bag. I usually put one or two per bag, zip them up, freeze them for up to three months. And then all you need to do is take them out of the freezer, pop them onto a plate and reheat them in the microwave. They're usually about two or three minutes or until they're piping hot all the way through. They're great 
whenever you want a little bit of a meatloafy sort of snack. But any leftovers the next day after baking, great on sandwiches, they're great by themselves. These are great to have cold in putting them into a picnic basket. There are so many things you can do with this. You can change up the flavors and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with in the comments. Lots of love to you all.